What's up, everybody? Welcome back to State of the Steelers. Welcome back to another film review. Today, we're going to be breaking down a couple of plays from Mason Rudolph and how he progressed throughout the game against the Baltimore Ravens in a victory 17 to 10, which propelled the Pittsburgh Steelers into a possible chance for a playoff uh, opportunity. And well, fortunately, the Titans beat the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Steelers will be taking on the Buffalo Bills this weekend. Please hit that like and subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Let's get into it. Let's break it down. This one right here is going to be one of my favorite plays for Mason Rudolph. Uh, this is him attacking the weak part of the zone. The defense here is going to be running zone defense across the board. You're going to have the two inside linebackers kind of drop back. Uh, this outside edge, you know, at the bottom of your screen is going to drop down and kind of cover where Jalen Warren is at. And the cornerback that's over Jalen Warren is just going to draw back in coverage as well into a cover two. These are the receiver routes that they will be running. You got a couple of inside comeback routes, a go route, and Jalen Warren's just going to stand there around the 30 uh, just to kind of occupy space there. So the reason why I like this play so much, you see where that go route is running, it's right there at the 40. That's where that's where Mason Rudolph is going to throw the ball necessarily. He's not throwing it at that guy, obviously. You have Pat Frymuth in the middle of the field there, and he's occupying both middle linebackers to kind of keep them honest. Pat Frymuth is a guy that the Steelers and Mason Rudolph have targeted earlier in the season at a high volume. And against the Cincinnati Bengals in the first meet, Pat Frymuth had a big game against the Cincinnati Bengals a few weeks earlier. And I think that it'd be smart of the Ravens to uh, double cover him and try to take him out as well. Obviously, they're also doing the same thing to George Pickens, as you see in the top of the screen. There are two defensive backs over him. The reason why I like this play so much is because Mason Rudolph has to throw uh, this ball into an open spot where Deontay Johnson isn't at yet. As you can see, he's right behind that defender in front of him, and Mason Rudolph has to throw into the hole, forcing Deontay Johnson to move into that hole, and he, he makes a great catch. Jalen Warren at the bottom, like I said, he's occupying space, but he's also keeping that defender honest. So that way he doesn't kind of drift that way. Makes the throw right in the soft part of the zone. And look, check that out. Mason Rudolph is getting blasted at the same time that he's throwing the ball. So not only is he throwing a very accurate ball at the right place and making his receiver go to the open area, he's also getting blasted at the same time. Full, calm, and collective in the pocket and not being rattled by the defense is a characteristic that you want out of a starting quarterback. And this was also on third down, so this ends up being a first down. Now, there's some immediate pressure, and the person that is going to end up applying that pressure is a nose tackle over Mason Cole. Some would be surprised, others wouldn't. He's kind of had a uh, more of a down season this year, you know, whether it was bad snaps or being overpowered in the middle. It's not been Mason Cole's year, and his defender is going to be who is applying the pressure on, on Mason Rudolph. And as you can see, number 50 right here, he's right in front of Deontay Johnson. So as Mason Rudolph is getting hit, he's going to have to throw this ball into that open area. And Deontay Johnson also has to see this and then make the right move and catch. Love it. And this is going to be the almost pick by Mason Rudolph. What the defense is doing is they're playing cover two zone with man coverage underneath and the receivers are George Pickens at the very bottom of your screen he's going to be running a straight and then he's going to come back and then the slot receiver is going to be Allen Robinson he's going to kind of run a post route in towards the middle of the field and what I think is going on here is Mason Rudolph's going to kind of look to his right and then he's going to go back to his left and what I'm assuming is that he thinks that because George Pickens has had so many go routes and has been so successful doing that, and up until this point, George Pickens has been the guy that's been double covered, I think he thinks that that safety is going to drop back just in case the ball's trying to be thrown over the top, which is going to leave Allen Robinson open, and it just doesn't happen that way. And Mason Rudolph ends up staring down the receiver a little bit too long and almost intercepted. Now, Mason Rudolph's under a lot of pressure. On this play here in particular, it's coming from Broderick Jones there on the right side. And Broderick Jones didn't have himself the best of games. A lot of pressure was applied to Mason Rudolph from Broderick Jones. As you can see, Mason Rudolph is looking at the center of the field when he snaps the ball, trying to look off the, uh, the safety there. Then he comes back, throws the ball, just uh, tears down the receiver. Now, what I think is going on here is that Baltimore has been you know, obviously doing some film study on Mason Rudolph and think that they've seen a tendency in Mason as far as him staring down receivers. And I do agree that that's been a problem of his up until this point. And even on that last play where Mason Rudolph almost threw an interception, 
But on this play here, you can see some of his progressions. This is the touchdown pass a lot later in the game where Mason Rudolph uses Baltimore's aggression for following his eyes against them. And what he's going to do is he's going to lock in on Pat Fryermuth, who's going to be in the middle of the field. Here's what you have. It's a similar play like last time you have cover two zone, uh, safeties running deep with man coverage underneath. And the routes that you have, you're going to have Pat Fryermuth, who's the tight end off of the tackle on the right side of the formation. He's going to kind of just go into the middle of the field, take his defender with him and also attract the safety. Mason Rudolph is going to look at him, which is going to be what attracts the safety. Deontay Johnson at the top of your screen, he's going to run a little bit of a slant post route here. What ends up happening is his defensive back and the defensive back um, covering over Allen Robinson, who does come open, collide with each other. So this is a little bit of a rub route. Now, I do think that the intended route here is Allen Robinson. And you're going to be able to tell that because he comes wide open, obviously. And also you can see that Mason Rudolph kind of does a little bit of a hitch where he's changing from that receiver to the one up top. Now, if that ends up being what is going on here, where Mason Rudolph is going from Allen Robinson to Deontay Johnson based on a little rub that he sees, that is quick progression. That's very fast progression, decisive move and a very fast throw on, you know, accurate and on time in the hole. That's what you want out of a franchise elite quarterback this is what i'm telling you you have the safety right here in the middle of your screen kind of looking at pat fire move because mason rudolph had you know stared him down in the beginning of the play at this point he's already releasing the ball you see the two defensive backs are already colliding and you see alan robinson wide open let's back this up a little bit so this is the point where mason rudolph decides to throw the ball he has alan robinson open for the first down i think he sees the cornerback covering deontay johnson is on a path to run into the cornerback run um, covering alan robinson which is going to leave him wide open he has to make that decision to go off of alan to deontay right now and then throw it accurately. Very impressive throw. Beats the safety, and it's a touchdown. Now, what makes this throw even more impressive is the fact that it was in the elements. It was windy. It was cold. I think it was 28 degrees with the windshield, uh, over 32, so it wasn't snowing. It was freezing rain. Monsoon, this is the fourth quarter. It's only gotten colder. Great throw by Mason Rudolph. Right here, you can see that he's staring down Patrick Firemuth. And then he jumps over here, and you're going to see a little bit of a hitch, and I think that's when he's going from Allen Robinson to Deontay Johnson behind him. Let me back this up a little bit. You can see that hitch in his play. Right there. Let's rewind that. Right there. You see he kind of like stepped in, changed his mind, and stepped up and threw it again. I think that is where he decides, all right, I'm coming off of Allen Robinson. I'm going to Deontay Johnson. Very quick, very quick progression, very quick throw, very accurate throw. I like it. I like it a lot from Mason Rudolph. Now, let's go back a little bit to the missed touchdown uh, earlier in this game. You have cover one with man across the board. Deontay Johnson is going to be running a go route. And what makes this you know play successful, in my opinion, is going to be George Pickens. And the reason being is he's a route in gold. And what he's going to do is he's going to go up and then he's going to go towards the middle of the field. And what that's going to do is that's going to attract his defensive back, obviously, and also the middle safety because he's running right at him. And it's going to leave one on one with Deontay Johnson and his defensive back at the bottom of the, of the screen. Now, if Deontay Johnson continues to run, you know, and doesn't you see right here, he kind of slows down, stops, puts his hand on the defensive back. He doesn't need to. He's already beaten him. He just needs to run straight. If he doesn't do that. That's that, that ball is thrown on stride and is perfect. This is a touchdown. And if we look at Mason Rudolph's stats for the day, he was 18 to 20, 152 yards, one touchdown, no picks. And if Deontay Johnson comes down with this ball, uh, this is clearly going to put him over the 200 yard mark. He'd be 19 to 20, two touchdowns, probably a perfect rating. And you can't get any better than that, especially in the conditions in which he was throwing the ball. I mean, you're looking at a, you know, rain throughout the entire game, freezing temperatures, can't get any better than this wind, He's, he's showing himself to be a very, very good quarterback. Yeah, and just kind of Deontay Johnson don't let up a little bit. That's going for six. Let's watch the eyes of Mason Rudolph real quick. So he's checking out the safety, making sure the safety stays where he's at. He's holding him there in the middle of the field. You know, George Pickens, like I said, he's going to run towards that direction. So, you know, that safety is going to see Mason looking at him, and then he looks towards George. George is running at him. He's going to stay there thinking that maybe perhaps that ball is going to come here. Now, Mason quickly 
looks to the left and then throws the ball. What could have been? This is the uh, fumble play here on Mason Rudolph. I'm going to be going through a couple of the bad plays, so to speak. But I wanted to show you guys what happened. On these plays here, there's nowhere to throw the ball to. Everybody's covered across the board. You have the safeties you know, eyeing Mason Rudolph so he tries to fit one in on the corner or on the sideline routes. Good luck. Pressure comes from Broderick Jones's side, and it's a fumble, and you'll be able to see it from this side. I don't know what Broderick Jones is doing with his guy on this play. It's, like I said in, earlier, this wasn't his best game. I think that Dan Moore probably had a worse game. However, when I pulled out these clips, it just so happened that Broderick Jones was the one losing uh, his battle. But look at the look at the way he hits this guy. It doesn't that's, that doesn't make sense. I played offensive lineman when I was in high school so it's i just don't get it like who, who's teaching this this isn't how you block somebody he's off balance if this was a stronger power rush he's going to be put on his butt right here and that would be embarrassing especially for our first round you know tackle that the steelers moved up in come on man you're better than this we've seen better play he's performed better than this even in this game I, it's just every now and then he does this i don't get it And again, the theme of this video is progressions. You know, Mason Rudolph learning from his mistakes, the Steelers moving from their mistakes. And here's another situation where there's nobody open. Everybody's covered this time. Mason Rudolph is able to find the underneath checkdown guy, which is Najee Harris in this situation. And this is the play that Najee should have just ran upward and gotten a first down. However, he kind of ran backwards. Let's rewind that just a sec. So as you can see, everybody's covered across the board. Are in position in case somebody does break open. There ain't nowhere to go with this ball. Let's check out the passing. Yeah, protection's good. Finds Najee. He just runs backwards away from a, a second string safety, which is you know, a little bit concerning, I guess. He should be running over that guy and going forward. He probably gets the first down. But overall, I think Mason Rudolph has played very, very well. I know he had that almost interception in this game. And, you know, if that player comes down with that ball that early in the game, maybe the whole dynamics of the game change and the Steelers end up not becoming victorious. Fortunately, Slipped through the guy's hands. There was a weather component that resulted in that drop ball as well. Like I said, it was raining the entire game. Ball was slippery. Both teams put it on the ground many a times. But for Mason, 18 to 20 in those conditions just tells you that he was being very efficient. Who knows? Maybe he'll be able to pull something out of a pull a rabbit out of his hand in Buffalo. The Steelers are going into more a 10 point underdog. I think that's disrespectful, especially for a team that's averaged 27 points per game in the last three games. Going up against a Buffalo team that really hasn't been putting up a lot of points offensively. They've had a few defensive plays, a few special teams plays that have gone their way. In my opinion, they're kind of winning similar to the way the Steelers were winning earlier this year. So the Steelers want to beat them. They're going to have to get up early. Maybe perhaps, you know, put up a couple of scores in the first quarter, control the ball. And if they can do so and force, you know, uh, Josh Allen to throw the ball and put the ball in the air, he's going to put it up there for grabs for somebody to come down with it. Uh, there's a handful of plays every single game that Josh Allen has where it's either a turnover or a turnover worthy type of play. So in my opinion, the Pittsburgh Steelers got a chance. Hit that like and subscribe button, ring that notification bell. We'll be back later this week. Until next time. Peace.